The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into the Views from the Sideline podcast. I'm Joey Tysick. Across from me is Malik Hill. And we're on our new uh, every other week schedule since we're both uh, a couple of busy guys, um, which is kind of nice. It kind of refreshes us. It doesn't help, though, that this this week's podcast is after a big election. So we had a lot of stuff going on at the studio and we're just everybody's mentally exhausted after seeing election ads for the past year basically and stuff like that so the good news is we have tons of sports to talk about that we don't even have time to probably get to everything so we have to recap college football college basketball started up the pistons have won a couple games the lions are still rolling they have a big game this weekend on sunday night um and yeah we're just in that full swing of getting closer to winter season where there's just so much going on, we can't even keep track of it all. So briefly, we'll go over college football. Uh, Michigan State, not much to talk about. They lost to Michigan. Uh, kind of happened like I thought it would. Kind of started like similar games where, you know, they start out okay. You think, okay, maybe they have a chance. And then Michigan just pulls away at the end. Um, again, with this stupid rivalry, I'm so tired of it. People love this rivalry because they think it's so big and bad or whatever they want to think. It's so annoying how juvenile this rivalry is. Like, the the fighting, the, the big brother, little brother, I don't care what side of it you are on. It's dumb. And it's just annoying. And that's, that's kind of why, like... At the root of it, I, I get that's a reason why a lot of people like college football. But for me, it's just such a turnoff that it's just it's just annoying. Um, so to see that at the end of the game is just whatever. Um, but that was pretty good. Um, at least the, like at least the game was fairly close for a little bit. Like I said, um, and then man, this this past week um, against Indiana was not pretty at all. Ten nothing. Great catch from Nick Marsh. Yeah. Things are going well. And, and then they went sideways. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Completely sideways. 47 unanswered points. Mm-hmm. Indiana put their foot on the gas. Yeah. And luckily, I had things going on that day. Um, we were out and about um, getting things done and went out to dinner with some friends to cap the night off. And, you know, the last time that I saw the game, it was 10 to 0. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. Well, we got to dinner, sat down, TVs are obviously on, and uh, at that point, it was like 40 to 10 or whatever it was. I saw Aiden was out of the game, and I'm like, cool. A lot of cool. things happen cool. very quickly. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunate. I don't know where the season is going to end here. Um. It's been okay of a season. I want to kind of get into that a little bit of like there was some hope here for the team. Uh, They still have looked good at times. It's more now getting in the consistency. Um, There's a chance to go six and six. Yeah. You got two two home games to end the season. Yeah, that's. And they're both winnable. You better beat Purdue. (laughs) Yeah. The Rutgers game is going to be – it could be fun because it's going to be a big game. Um, And I don't know what Rutgers' schedule is, but they're probably going to be close to looking at a bowl game as well. Um, So that could be kind of a fun game. Yeah, they have Minnesota this week, Maryland next week, and Illinois. So they're – maybe not. They might not be looking for a bowl game, but, I mean, maybe they beat Minnesota or something. That Um, last game will be – the one for both teams most likely right but um yeah it's again i think 
four, five, six win season is acceptable for me. Had some close calls. Um, the Boston College game was a little bit disappointing, of course, but we hung around with Oregon for a little bit, hung around with Michigan most of the game, uh, just made some mistakes. So the Iowa win is probably their best win of the season. Yeah, and they looked really good in that game. Um, but like we said, it's just kind of building the program out, and I'm not going to take too much from it. Um, I'm treating them like the Pistons, like I've said. Just keep building from where we're at, and hopefully – we can slowly get more and more guys and uh, keep improving. Yeah, that's that's my spiel. Not much to it. Just keep getting better. I'm not I'm not worried about the team next year. Once we get into next year stuff, we'll add a little bit more pressure to them. But for right now, year one, it's been acceptable. Meanwhile, the Wolverines, uh, they're kind of in the same spot they've been. They're like moving laterally. Where they, they've improved they're fluctuating. somewhat. Yeah. But they can't overcome the coaching. Yeah. It was good to see him get a win over MSU. Uh, Davis Warren got the start again mm-hmm. and looked him, looked better than he did the first few weeks. Yeah. Alex Orgy had a few good runs. Solid win. I, uh,. This isn't like real life hate. I football hate Kirk Campbell. Yeah. He's a football terrorist. Not IRL. This is in the yeah, game. This is sports hate. <laughs> I sports hate Kirk Campbell. He will call two or three good plays in a row. And then the next two drives will be absolute nonsense. Mm-hmm. Davis Warren has the best game of his career so far against Oregon. He has the hot hand. He's playing well. He's thrown two touchdown passes, and he calls a series of plays that is one of the biggest head scratchers I've ever seen. Did you see the last play he called when they had a chance to be down just by one touchdown against Oregon? Mm -mm. They're down uh, 31-17. They're getting near the red zone, and Davis Warren throws it out of bounds on the first down, and he doesn't come on the field for the rest of the series. And then they get to fourth down, and they run a reverse to Samaj Morgan so he can throw it back to Alex Orgy for a touchdown pass. Hmm. What does that sound like to you when Davis Warren is having his best game and <laughs> you don't bring him on the field to maybe throw a touchdown pass and you do a reverse, you snap it to Alex Orgy, he throws it to Samaj Morgan. And on fourth down, you want Samaj Morgan to throw the touchdown pass. How does that sound to you, Joey? When you have a chance to be down one touchdown to Oregon? Thinking too hard. That's what it is. Um, who yeah. did Somebody did that in the NFL this past weekend, too. Um, I can't remember who it was. Anyway, yeah, it's like overthinking the situation. Listen, Kirk Campbell got fired at Old Dominion. He failed upwards. Lucked into J.J. McCarthy and Jim Harbaugh. And now he can't do anything. So thank you, Kirk Campbell. You need to be gone by the end of the season. Wink Martindale has wasted a very talented defense. Guys still look lost. Mm -hmm. There are still penalties. There are still plays where guys aren't ready. They're just looking at each other, and then the ball snaps, and they don't know what they're doing. You have a very, very talented pass rush with, two guys that'll be first and second round picks and they can't get much of a rush because offensive lines just key on them. And then that's pretty much done. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the most disappointing Michigan team I've seen since the Brady Hoke era. And by the end of the Brady Hoke era, we knew it was over. Yeah. This is coming off of a national championship and most Michigan fans realize they, they weren't going to be like incredible again. Right. A lot of fans even accepted seven and five or eight and four was possible. But this right here, this 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 won't cut it. Yeah. It it won't cut it. Sharon Moore is gonna get another year to to prove if he can fix this. He's doing well recruiting. He's flipped some high profile guys. Yeah. He's going for the top QB in the country who happens to be from Michigan, Bryce Underwood. Mm-hmm. 
and he has to flip the coordinators. Kirk Campbell and Wink Martindale cannot come back. I, I don't see what it would do for this university, for this football program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's They got to go. Yeah. I'm sorry. They have to go. And, I mean, this is hindsight, obviously, but do we really, like, was the Giants defense in the NFL? He got fired. Any good? From the Giants. Exactly. And Are the Giants Hyatt. a better defensive team this year? Kind of. Yeah. I would say yes. Kind of because they upgraded there's, in a few positions. They're but, still not yeah. a good team, obviously, but their defense has been improved. They, At one point, they were leading the league in sacks, so they're at least getting pressure. It's just, Sh it's just interesting. Sharon took the easy route and went with the guy that created the defense that they had been calling for the past few years and completely neglected the fact that he hasn't been good yeah. for a few years. Mm-hmm. He, he he got lazy, mm. and the Kirk Campbell hire was lazy too. JJ went out the door. Your QB room isn't great, and you went with a guy that has never been a very good coordinator. Yeah, Sharon failed d decision making in those positions this for his first year, mm -hmm. and I want to see if he can fix it. But he has to cut bait with those guys as soon as the off season starts. Yeah, I'd love if he did it now, but the season's still going. You're trying to keep morale together. Once right. the season is over, get rid of them. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah, and they'll probably. Are they five and four? Yes. Yeah, they're five and four. I don't think they're not going to beat Indiana. Indiana is top ten right now and trying to make the college football playoff. Mm -hmm. They've been a machine. What a time to be alive! Indiana's this good, and Michigan isn't good. Yeah, we're in the twilight zone. They'll beat Northwestern. They'll probably finish six and six. Yeah. And in the bowl game, I want to see Jaden Davis. I don't care about Davis Warren anymore. <laughs> I don't care about the Alex Orgy experience. Jack Tuttle retired. I didn't yeah. even bring that up. Yeah. Because of a concussion, I think. Yeah, it was injury yeah. related. And he retired. He's gone. Let us see what the kid has. <laughs> Let us get a glimpse yeah. of something to be hopeful for. Yeah. Your most talented passer on the roster. Yeah. But it won't matter if they get Bryce, so, you know. <laughs> Listen. Just, we'll, if it happens, we'll, we'll talk yeah. about that when we get there. Right. But, hey, six and six, you go to a – I hope they make the quick lane bowl. I'll go to it in Detroit. <laughs> Send them to the quick lane bowl. I want to see Jaden Davis live. Okay. Have them play against Eastern. Oh jeez, <laughs> that'll be that'll be a packed uh, stadium. Yeah, that'd be honestly kind of hilarious. But they won't put Michigan in the quick lane bowl. But no, yeah, too much pedigree. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, college football kind of disappointing for the home teams, but um, came out with the first college football playoff rankings. Um, and I mean nothing's fully changed. Oregon's still number one. Georgia number yeah. two. Penn State's at three. Ohio State's yeah. at four. James Franklin is a joke. Continues to be. <laughs> Could have beaten Ohio State and couldn't do it once again. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, Indiana and BYU being in the top ten is the coolest part. Yeah. yeah. It's really it's weird. Really cool to see. Um, Notre Dame getting back up there as well. Yeah. Boise and SMU are 12 and 13. That's also fun. Yeah. And Alabama is on the chopping block, which is yeah. awesome to see they're playing LSU this weekend. So that's kind of a, a huge game for them. And then um Iowa State still sitting at seven and one. They did just barely lose to Texas Tech, which was disappointing. Listen, they lost at home and Kansas State lost at Houston. Yeah. Which opens the door for the twentieth ranked team in the country. <laughs> the Colorado oh, Buffaloes. I know. <laughs> it could happen. I don't know. And that would make a lot of people unhappy, but it's it's possible. Yeah, and I don't know how to feel about it. I wouldn't be unhappy. I just I just don't know how to feel about it, I guess. Um unfortunately, Navy also lost their last two games. Got blown out by Notre Dame. That was kind of expected. Um they lost, then they to, lost Rice. to Rice. Yeah, that, that wasn't. And that, just that wasn't good. Hurt everything. So Army is our last hope. <laughs> yes. They're, <laughs> they're still undefeated. They get to play uh Notre Dame in 2 weeks. Yeah. Although their their starting quarterback was hurt last game. They still won and beat Air Force. Yeah. But they got to get him back. Well, they don't use their quarterback, so Actually, 
Are they passing for once? Them and, them and Navy have been passing. Have they? Yeah. Shows how much I they, watch. <laughs> they still run the option, but they've they've updated the offenses. Oh, option. wow, you're right. They completed five passes last game. Uh, like, I, like I said, the starter <laughs> was hurt. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, geez. But, yeah, they, they passed more. Hmm. Okay. Um. Also, the other thing I was going to say is um, Ashton Genty – has kind of fallen, not fallen off, yeah. but he's kind of fallen he's out. He's had two good games in a row, and he needs to have incredible every week. Yeah, he needs to almost, I think they were saying for him to like win the Heisman and beat Barry, he needs to like average 200 yards or something, Around which that. is And he he was insane. for like the first six weeks, he was. Right. But, yeah. So, kind of a, a side note disappointment thing, but still, we could see him in the college football playoff. By chance, there's a way. Um, so yeah, college football starting to get down to the wire. It is insane that it's already November. The mm-hmm. last three weeks, I know it's crazy. Yeah, which leads us to college basketball. It's here. <laughs> it's kind not of a wild. full focus because football season is still going, but yeah, we're getting started. And it it kind of crept up on me because I was telling you that all of a sudden I was what was I do? I was just Looking at my ESPN app, and all of a sudden, I one of the top things was Michigan State basketball playing Monmouth. And I was like, okay, <laughs> we're playing games now, I guess. Um, so, the thing that stinks about Michigan State's basketball situation right now is, to me, it's very similar to the football team. But, I mean, there's a little bit more hope, I guess. But I'm still, like, at a wait-and-see moment because now it really is the young guys taking over. And it scares me a little bit. Now, the nice thing is Jaden Akins is kind of the guy as far as veteran leadership, I would think. We'll see. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, we'll see. But at least, like, on paper, that's who he is. Um. Jeremy Fears is back, so hopefully he can, you know, improve of what we saw last year before his unfortunate situation getting shot. Um, and so the biggest one is what do we do about Xavier Booker? That's up to Tom Izzo. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's above like, us now. <laughs> do we like do we give him the keys? Do we just? I don't. I'm, I don't think Tom is old, dude. I don't either. Yeah, he wouldn't do it with Jaron Jackson. <laughs> but like, I don't. That's. I think that's the scary part. Is like we are in that point again, where it's like, is Tom Izzo going to hold this team back? And I'm nervous that he might. I think Michigan State fans should be a little afraid. Yeah. And part of it is the first game. Yeah, they won. Mm-hmm. They beat Monmouth convincingly. Yeah. But. Team performance wise, it didn't look that much different from last year. Yeah, like they didn't shoot well overall. Yeah, which scares especially from three point range scares the crap out of me. Yeah. Now, Jaden Akins shot well. That's good. Yeah. But the rest of the team, what they hit a combined like five threes, maybe uh, three for eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And even I mean, Jaden Akins was one of four. So, so I'd see. I I I must have read that wrong. I thought he hit more than one three. No, he was but, eight of twelve from the field. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, okay, he so just he had just, a good overall he shot game. Good. Yeah. Um, I would say the positive out of this, and I mean it's against Monmouth, but they rebounded the ball well. I I mean that's like a Michigan State thing. So if if they're doing that, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, they shot eighteen of twenty seven from the free throw line. Don't love that. Um, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. Um, and yeah, Xavier Booker was two of ten from the floor, zero for four from three. Like I don't know where they go. The thing I what will, is what is there to be excited about? So the thing that I like though, I do think there's potential for depth for this team. Whereas last year I didn't really. Jace Richardson see looked it. good. Exactly. Him and Curtang could be. Right. Yeah. And maybe Cohen Carr is going to be good off the bench as just a yeah. spark plug. I mean. You bring him, Jason Curtang, off together. 
That could be something. Yeah. And then um, we still have uh, – why do we always – how would I always forget Trey Holloman? Trey Holloman <laughs> – yeah, is there the guy that I used your to, elbow shooter? Di- yeah, I used to dis. Uh, what's the one? You kind of hated on him. Yeah, yeah, I hated on him a lot, and then he proved his worth. So right. shouts out to Trey Holloman. So like, there's guys that can hit shots. I think for this team, again though, can they develop? That's the the nervy part for me. I think. Um, we got stinking. The thing, the other thing that I like though too is, um, we do have the seven footer now. Simon's Apollo. Yes, I think he had like nine points. Yeah, like nine that. points, eight yeah. rebounds. Mm-hmm. I keep uh, bouncing back and forth, but I like having a big like that to pair up with Xavier Booker. Um, we're a lot bigger on the floor now, which I think is good. Uh, Frankie Fiddler, I don't know much about. I'll be honest. Transfer from Omaha. What do Omaha. you know? What do you know about Omaha, Joey? Uh, it's in Nebraska. Yeah. Um, is that about it? The isn't it where the Little League World Series is played? I think it is. See, um, you got me. I've I completely forgot. So <laughs> because, and the only reason I know that is because there's there's a zoo in Omaha that I went to when I was like in like middle school. It's like one of the coolest zoos I've ever been to. Yeah, and then Peyton, anyway, and then Peyton Manning, Omaha, Omaha. But yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, I, but again, he's six, seven forward. Like, I just like that we have a little bit more size because it felt like last year we played a lot of small ball, um, getting just outmanned, like, especially when we're playing Zach Eady. Um, now he's gone, but I don't know. I haven't checked Purdue. They probably have a seven foot five center somewhere on their roster. Well, their starter is a seven foot four freshman and their backup is a seven foot four guy. Okay. So yeah. See, they keep they're finding these giant freshmen. Yeah. I don't understand it. I don't know where they're coming from, but they keep finding them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, to sum everything up, I just like that this team has depth. The biggest concern is can they develop? Can Tom Izzo just get out of his own way at times? And I think this team could really get rolling. The other thing I like, people aren't talking about them. Last year, all the hype in the world. This year, it's like we just need to get something out of these guys. So hopefully they work with that chip on their shoulder and they can get things going. But right now, I'm, I'm kind of in the positive uh, for this team. And the nice thing is, on the other side, Michigan might also have a really good team. So yeah, Quick MSU update before uh, we jump to Michigan. Oh, boy. Uh, Matty Sissoko had 10-6 and six for Kyle in their first game. I don't care Pretty about decent. him. I don't care about him. <laughs> good for Matty Sissoko. I don't care. Out there in the West Coast getting don't, it done. I don't care what he does. <laughs> but he could have put up 20 and 20, and I could have said, <laughs> I don't care. The second thing I was going to bring up for, for Michigan State is they might need to be afraid of Michigan. Okay. Because the way they they played, I watched their exhibition against Toledo. It was exciting. They let Toledo score like 93, so it was inconsistent. Mm-hmm. This game against Cleveland State, this won't happen often. Yeah. But it shows you what they're capable of. 68% from the field, 55% from three, mm-hmm. 101 to 53. They play fast. They get it down the court quick. Yeah. They played intensely on defense. They look like they've been like together for a while. They they had chemistry. They didn't look lost. They had one, two, three, four, five, six guys in double figures. And the standout was Danny Wolf, mm. who transferred from Yale, born and raised in Michigan, was a beeline era kid, didn't wasn't recruited much out of Illinois, played at, at Yale for two years, developed a ton. He is a seven foot, like do everything guy. Mm. Like he can handle the ball, he can shoot, he can drive to the rim. Yeah. It it's kind of crazy seeing how skilled he is mm-hmm. and how he came from nowhere. Yeah. He was really impressive. He had 19 and 13. Trey Donaldson, the new point guard from Auburn, 4-4 four four from the field, two two threes, 16 and 7 assists. Yeah. Uh, Roddy Gale from Ohio State, he attacked the, the rim really well. T looks really tough. Uh, Will Cheddar, 
<laughs> Did you see his dunk? No. Uh, uh, listen. Again, I haven't I haven't fully dived into the college basketball realm. I'm always a little slow with the college sports. A- after we finish this, I'm going to show you the Will Cheddar dunk, and you will <laughs> think it's not it's a different person. Okay. He looks energized under Dusty May, and him playing with confidence is really fun. Yeah. And then my personal washout guy, Dusty May brought one recruit with him from FAU, mm-hmm. a three-star kid from Florida, not really heralded recruit, a kid named LJ Kaysen. Mm-hmm. Joey, this kid, he has everything. Like, I, I, it looks like he's suppo- he was supposed to be like a top 100 guy. Mm-hmm. Like, he has handle, he has a jumper, he has no issue driving to the rim and getting tough buckets. He's like composed and confident. Yeah. And I don't know like why he went so under the radar. He's 6'2", 190. And like it when he's out there, it, I'm completely confident when he's on the court. Mm-hmm. And he's a true freshman, like just random three star kid that can, I, I I love the way he plays, and he's gonna be a star. Like he's special, mm. L.J. Kaysen. Yeah, I love what I've seen from him. So first night, honestly, close to A plus. Hmm. It was as good as it could have gotten for Michigan in game one, and Dusty May showing the style of play they want to uh, play. Yeah, fast on offense, really, really intense on defense. They had a bunch of steals. It it was fun to watch. Yeah, it was really fun to watch. And like you said, it's kind of scary, and and maybe the Big Ten is kind of just buying back into. You know, their old mantra, but with Michigan State getting bigger. Michigan now has two seven-footers with Vlad Golden. Yeah. Vlad Golden barely did anything, and they played yeah. amazing. And now they have this uh, Danny Wolf, like you said. Um, I'll have to check him out. I feel like I remember watching some of his uh, tape when when that was announced. Um, but, yeah, like the Big Ten is back to just being like just a bunch of big dudes and then three-point shooters on the outside to stretch the floor. Like, yeah. That's kind of, like you said, it's kind of beeline style in a way. The way they played was beeline-esque. Yeah. It was. Right. The way they got up and down and shot the ball. Yeah. So, again, I, similar boat. I'm, like, I'm just excited to watch Michigan-Michigan State basketball again. I haven't been that way in a couple of years, to be honest. Um, there's some sparks here and there, but nothing that's fully stuck. And now that both programs kind of have somewhat reset – Michigan State won't fully reset until Izzo's out, but that's fine. The the old guard from this last kind of rotation is out. All the young guys are in. Michigan kind of revamping their whole program. Like it's it's exciting. Um and I'm I'm ready to watch some college basketball once yeah. these get going. And I I would give Michigan an A plus, but there's there's one little hang up. Mm-hmm. Just one. Uh there's a kid that won Mr. Basketball last year in Michigan mm-hmm. from Grand Rapids. His real name is Darrell, I'm pretty sure, Darrell Brooks. Okay. But he goes by Fat Fat, Joey. Mm. You like that nickname, Fat Fat? Um, I looked it up. It's P-H. with P-H, yeah. P-H, Fat Fat, yeah. yeah. Well, he should have done P-H and then an F, Fat. That would have been a lot. Fat Fat with different spellings. That would have been. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Play for ahead. the family, hometown kid. Good good, good for him. Mm-hmm. He looked uh, pretty terrible, <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. He hit one three. His jumper looks kind of awkward. He he got chased down. Like, he slowed down on a fast break and tried to lay it up, and it got swatted off the glass. Mm-hmm. He put up a floater in the half court where he, like, barely jumped. He looked like he just wasn't ready. Yeah. He looked like he wasn't ready. He he needs more time to cook. Yeah. And Scottie Pippen's son, Justin, who mm-hmm. was a higher-rated recruit than Fat Fat Brooks, Yeah, he was hurt in the preseason, so he hasn't played yet. Mm-hmm. But I'd like to see him more over Fat Fat. I also got Howard Isley Jr. Uh, he looks he looks so funny out there. He's like my height yeah. and kind of built like me. It, <laughs> it's it's hilarious. Interesting. But uh, a a a level performance for Michigan. They, yeah, game one, and awesome. they they got Wake Forest Sunday at one. So okay. the competition goes up a little bit. Yeah. Wake Forest almost made the tournament last year. Mm-hmm. They got some good players coming back, so it'll be a decent test. Yeah. For Dusty May and Michigan. Michigan doesn't have anybody for two weeks. Then they get their usual big game. They're playing Kansas this year at the Champions Classic, so that'll be 
Yeah. Pretty yeah, wild. They play Vatek on, on November 25th, so that, that should be interesting, too, in the mm-hmm. Fort, Fort Myers tip-off. Yeah. So, looks like Michigan's going to have a little bit slower ramp-up than – or Michigan State's going to have a little bit slow. you say Michigan plays Kansas? No, Michigan State. Oh, I'll get you to say Michigan State. State plays okay, Kansas, yeah. and that's like yeah. one of their only warm-up games. What's the name of that kickoff at the Garden? What is it called? I can't remember. The some, the tip-off or something. I can't remember, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. This is the, when, when they swap teams every year. This is the State Farm Champions yeah, Classic. Yeah, okay, the State Farm Champions Classic. Yeah. yeah. This is in Atlanta, though. Oh, they're not playing the, at the – oh, okay. That's what it says. Hmm. They, maybe they switch locations. I don't know. I can't keep track. They it's, have so it's many. Michigan State, uh, Kentucky, Duke, and North Carolina. Yeah, no, not North Carolina. Uh-huh. It's Michigan State, Kentucky, Duke, and Kansas. Yeah, like because like the the past five six years they they like swap. Okay. And playing that. Yeah. I can't keep track of the early season events. Yeah, slash there, tournaments. there's so many. The Maui Classic is the one everybody mainly pays attention to. Yeah. That one. But it doesn't like normally Michigan State has a a couple more of those, but it looks like they only have the Champions Classic this year. Okay. Um, I mean there are they are in the the Maui Invitational. Oh, um, okay. That's the two like main big ones. So, but and Tom Izzo always likes to throw the everything at his team to start a season. They're playing Colorado. I don't know how Colorado's going to be this year. But, I, yeah, nobody knows how good they're going to be. So, hmm. but yeah, um, kind of a light schedule comparatively at least yeah. for Michigan State. So we'll, we'll see. Um but college basketball is back. Yeah. Just getting started only a few games so far. Gonzaga smacked Baylor. Mark Few uh put his son out there to get destroyed. VJ Ed- Edgecombe might be a problem. Uh, he is. He didn't play well statistically that yeah. first game, but he's going to he, be a lottery pick. Yeah, I mean he's going to get going, but Yeah, freshman that's wise. Terrifying. There's a true freshman that was a five star that went to Illinois named Will Riley. He had 31 in their first game. Okay. Almost 6'10", a shooter, smooth player. Uh, the top Euro prospect, Igor Dim, Dim is it Demon? I think Igor Demon hmm. from Russia. He's at BYU. Yeah. 18 in his first game, played really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there there's some freshmen that had some uh, really good games. I keep forgetting that Hunter Dickinson came back. Yeah. Wild. Uh, not even paying attention to it. Um. So anyway. How did I not know that they – oh, my gosh. So this is why – this this is kind of the fun part, though, of why I don't pay attention to off-season stuff for college because it's fun to just find out what happens. I don't remember A.J. Storr going to Kansas. Yeah. That's wild. He was I, he never made sense at Wisconsin to start with. He had a good year, but he was going to end up going somewhere else. But, yeah, he's he's at Kansas now. That's just wild. Um, And then Duke might be a problem. Listen, man. They, they might be a problem. You need to watch Con Knipel. Yeah. No, I've seen him. I I, he I might, didn't see any first game highlights, but I've I've seen some. He of might his be exhibition. their best shooter since JJ Redick. Yeah. It's, like it looks good every time it leaves his hands. Yeah. And he's like big and strong and can drive to the rim. Yeah. He's he's something else. Take this however you want. It it doesn't. I don't mean anything by it. Duke just seems to be better off when they're led by white guys. Okay. It just, they have more of a championship ceiling. Just, it just outside of the Jalil Okafor year. I can't tell you. In, yeah, I can't tell you why. It just, that's just they've won more championships with like yeah yeah like three or four white guys playing. Right. They've had plenty they've of won talent, more obviously. But yeah. now with uh, how do you pronounce it? Nipple. Con Knipple. Knipple. And that, that's that that's is weird. how they pronounce it. Okay. I thought it was Nipple. Yeah, that's what I would think. It's Con Knipple. <laughs> and Cooper yeah. Flag. And like, Cooper Flag. And then um what's the yeah, they got the big African center, like I think it's Malawatch. I think that's his last name. Yeah. They're they're listen, they're everybody that comes off the bench is transfers and then like experienced guys. So they got everything. Who's the guy that jumps out of the gym for them too? Is that just Malak? The the big guy also has like athleticism or something? Yeah, he does. He's like seven two, but I don't know if there's somebody I can't remember. You're thinking of. I wish I could remember, but yeah. And then I mean Getting guys like Tyrese Proctor back, like yeah. they're gonna be tough. Um, UConn obviously still gonna be up there. Alabama preseason number two. Can you give me some insight why they're number two? Uh, I mean they were Final Four team last year. Uh, they brought back their point guard, the lefty Mark, Mark Sears. Sears. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to think if they yeah. brought anybody. They got in. Cliff Omaruyi from Rutgers to oh, come in. Okay. He's their big. 
Yep. Uh, they there was a five star guard from Auburn that transferred over to Alabama, Aiden okay. Holloway. So they're they just they restock. Okay. They they just reload every year at this point. I was just curious. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I know they're a good team, but I like, was... there's there's no fall off with them at this point. They're gonna keep bringing in talent. Yeah. Plus, they brought in like three f- five star guards. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So yeah. So yeah. Um, the normals are up at the top: Kansas, Alabama. UConn, Houston, Iowa State, Gonzaga, Duke, Baylor, UNC, Arizona. So, going to be a fun season, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, we got to start moving quickly. Um, quick, quick NBA update. Yeah. Pistons. Three and five. Three and five after starting one and five. Um, one through the last four. They've looked okay. Beating the Lakers was essential. Yeah. To fans having some confidence. Yes. Yeah, they beat the Lakers and it didn't look like a fluke. Yeah. Um, so started the season real quick. Where's um they started against the Pacers, right? That was their first game? Uh yeah. They were in control most of the game, but then they yep. lost it. Lost in the fourth quarter. Well uh, the Yeah, yeah, that was the first game. And then they played the Cavs, kind of a similar situation, was okay. Really messed up in the second quarter. Then they hung around with the Celtics, kind of blew it in the end, um, lost to the Heat. So they played some quality Eastern Conference teams, and this is what we talked about a couple weeks ago is that the Eastern Conference is just much improved. Then they beat Philly for their first win. They don't have Joel Embiid, don't have Paul George. They That's a game you, you have to win. Exactly. It's yeah, a must win. So they got that win, which was nice, got the monkey off their back. They got obliterated by the Knicks. Blown out. <laughs> yeah. Looked terrible after the Knicks kind of had a, a slow little start to their season. Um, Jalen Brunson just took care of business, destroyed them. They couldn't do anything about Cat. And then they played the Nets. They were down to the Nets. And you described this as a must win. Yeah, I was nervous about this game because they going into halftime, they were down by a, a decent amount, I think. I can't fully remember. But it was a lot of back and forth throughout the game. And this was kind of the, the the first time this season that it felt like the Pistons actually closed the game out really well. Um, so they got that win, which was really nice. Jalen Dern had a big game. Um, and, yeah, if, if they would have lost to Brooklyn, that just would have been atrocious to me personally. Um, then, like you said, good, good win against the Lakers. I can't, I can't knock them for the Lakers win. They've looked good. Um, Kate had a triple double. I forgot about that. He had his first triple double, I think. Um, yeah. I think it was his first. Possibly. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Um, so they're looking better. They're on a little bit of a hot streak. They play Charlotte. Is that tonight or tomorrow? Uh, I think it's tonight. Uh, yes, it's tonight. Yeah. Um, so they have Charlotte, then they have um, Atlanta, Houston. Two winnable games. So looking pretty decent. The only thing that they, they're like, their biggest problem right now. And they've they've cleared it up a little bit. Is the fourth quarter stuff? They just haven't looked very good. Um, and as long as Cade can just cut down on the turnovers, that was a big problem early on. He was among the lead leaders leaders in turnovers. Um, and I get that he has the ball in his hand a lot, but you just can't give the ball away. Especially, it was a lot in the fourth quarter that he was struggling. So if he can figure that out, maybe this team can get something going. Um, I think the Charlotte game is another big one just because this is one of those teams that we said we're going to kind of have to compete for, um, for, you know, kind of the, that last play in spot or one of those playing spots. So I think this is actually a good litmus test for this team to find out where they're at. Now, I would, the nice thing is for the Pistons, Charlotte's banged up right now. Mark Williams is out. Nick Richards just got banged up. So he's going to be out. They're down to like, I think they're, talking about starting Musa Diabate. So they're going to play like small ball, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to do it. Um, so we'll see. But the big matchup is obviously going to be LaMelo versus Cade. Yeah. Um, and that should be really interesting to watch too. So, and then you got Brandon Miller that they got to compete against. That's going to be a tough matchup. Um, the crazy part is Trey Mann is averaging 20 off the bench for them right now. He's yeah. been balling. Yeah, so Charlotte's been looking pretty good. Still got Miles Bridges they, they over look there. Fun, not good. Yeah, true. That's yeah. a good point. Um, 
So kind of excited for this matchup. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll keep an eye on this one. But um, Pistons are looking all right. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I'll be honest. I haven't watched enough of them to really have a, a big swinging opinion, but I, I have watched a bunch of the highlights, and I'm not ready to buy in just yet still. They look like a professional team, and they didn't last year, which yeah. is a step up already. Right. Do you have anything else to add about these Pistons? Uh, no, nah, not much. Okay. Yeah, just a, a few more quick points for the NBA. Okay. Uh, the Pistons have a better record than Philly and Milwaukee combined. Shouts well, out to Doc Rivers and Darvin Ham. Well, Philly, the dynamic duo. <laughs> Philly's got a Joel Embiid problem. Yeah, and um, to say the least, he punched a reporter. And to be honest, also just I mean, this was the risk of getting Paul George too. Yeah. Just, last, last game, Paul George waved off Tyrese Maxey in the clutch. Yeah, <laughs> that was tough. Um, and then the Bucks are just a, they suck. a nightmare. <laughs> they suck. They're literally talking about trading Giannis and Damian Lillard. I don't even think I, it's not possible. At least for now, it's not possible. You don't think so? But no, Giannis is Milwaukee. Yeah. Like what is what is the rebuild after you lose something like that? Well, I mean, it, they it, they've drafted terribly. It would be like a historic trade of like you know four first round picks or something. Like somebody would give up their entire future for Giannis. Listen, man. I don't know who has that many first round picks because there's been so many trades in the last couple of years. But and then. Somebody else would want to get Damian Lillard. That's also going to be a contender, and they're not going to have that many picks. So, and I mean, Dame's older, so he do, he's not going to cost as much. But still, like that's that's wild. It's a it's been a shit show. Maybe I mean maybe maybe the Bucks just get in on the the Cooper Flag race. I guess. Now I don't think he's going to turn around their franchise Cooper by any Flag, means. Giannis I'm and Dame. Just, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, That'd be hilarious. So yeah, that. I, that I, don't, I don't know of, what fixes it. That's the that's the like real bad part. Chris Middleton isn't fixing this. No. Well, I I mean the problem is like they, they can't defend anybody. <laughs> I don't know how a team, and I think we mentioned it a couple weeks ago. Is like I don't know how a team goes from a championship to abysmal so quickly without losing players. They technically added talent. With Damian Lillard. Now we knew they were going to take a hit on defense, but like you said, like they don't play defense right now. The Doc Rivers signing was a question mark. Everybody from the scratched get-go. their heads. Yes. Nobody understood it. <laughs> People didn't understand when they fired Mike Budenholzer. Then they didn't let uh, who was the coach in between? I forgot his name. AJ but Griffin. Was that was, who it was? Maybe he had a better record than whatever they're doing right they now. They didn't let him. They. They got so nervous that he yeah. was like the team basically had a mutiny. Like they they didn't like him yeah. as a coach, and he was just barely above five hundred. So sure, championship caliber team struggling, but now Doug, Doc Rivers has been struggling for almost a year now. Like, when is he going to get the can? Like, they're in disarray at this point, and it's from the top down. So I don't know. It's kind of funny to watch, but at least they got a ring. Ex- this is kind of like Michigan. It kind <laughs> of is like. <laughs> If you ask Milwaukee fans, like, are you okay because you want a ring? They might say, yeah. But they're also, they might be, at this point, you're starting to feel like you're wasting Giannis's last bit of his prime because he's crazy enough. Giannis is starting to get old. And he's still dominant. Yeah. It's wild to think about, but he's starting to enter that that twilight period. Um, So, yeah, I I don't know. Crazy. It's weird. Uh, Steve Kerr is having his best season coaching maybe ever. Mm-hmm. I Steph, feeling- has bar- yeah, Steph has barely played, and they're hooping. Yep. Buddy Heald is playing like it's Oklahoma again. Yeah, because he just he gets to run off screens. He gets to play in that Warriors offense. Yeah. I loved the signing when I saw it. And, I mean, maybe in my years I've become somewhat of a Warrior slappy, but, like, I just like when that team plays well, and they're they're fun to watch. They keep just bringing in new guys and – it just works. So. Even Draymond looks the best he has in a while. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, Andrew Wiggins, inconsistent, but he's shown flashes a little bit. So your Pelicans are banged up, Joey. <laughs> Boy, are <laughs> to they. say the least. Boy, are they? Yeah, losing Dejounte Murray already for four to six weeks. I think it's his wrist. Um, Jordan Hawkins also banged up. Like, yeah, ugh. it's yeah, it's it's not fun. 
to be a New Orleans yeah. fan. Every time you get excited, it seems like that's the year that they, they start getting injuries. Um, so we'll see. I mean, obviously it's early in the season, but yeah, it, it's, it's disappointing to see. Yeah. And then one last point for me, uh, John Morant is an alien. He might be the most like athletic athlete in the world. Mm-hmm. Those, those three sixty layups against Brooklyn don't make sense. Yeah. It's like, it, it's ridiculous how high he can jump and how, how, how long he can sit in the air. Right. And Zach Eady is leading rookies in points and he just had a 25 and 12 game and hit a transition three. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's kind of figuring it out on that team. Yo, man, 1.5. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really kind of interesting to watch. Um, it's been kind of fun. Um, which is weird because the other rookies have done nothing. Alex yeah. Sar, I haven't heard a thing Zach about. Zachary's averaging 11, and he's leading the rookies Meanwhile, Zachary Richache. He's averaging nine points. And his the, the like the Alex biggest Sarr news is third in rookie scoring. The biggest news from Riesache was man, over in Europe, overseas I was, I was more like, athletic. Yeah. Now I'm just a regular athlete. Now I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> it's incredible. Great. Number one pick Zach Riesache. <laughs> Great. Who could have seen it coming, Joey? Great. Who could have seen it coming? Um Yeah, Bub Carrington is second in rookie scoring. Yeah. Ten a game. Congratulations. And then the one of the biggest Hyped up draft picks. Reed Shepard is barely playing. I I don't know what Ime Udoka is doing. I think he played. They the, they are like I I don't know what the plan is. I think he played the most minutes last night, and he played fourteen minutes. Fred Van Vliet is playing yeah. terribly, and they're playing him like thirty minutes a game. Yeah, and they're not giving Reed a chance yet. Yeah, it it's and it, I, I don't know. It's weird because I feel like they could do something weird. Um where they could play, like, three guards and put, like, Jalen Green at the three or something. Like, I know that they signed him. It was, like, sort of a weird big deal. Dylan Brooks, just sit the guy. He, what is he adding to your team? Um, I feel like he'd be a better six man. So then you could play, like, Van Vliet if you just feel like you need that veteran out there. Jalen Green, Reed Shepard. They've been really weird so far overall. And it's it's hard to explain what that team is. They're four and three, so it's like they're doing all right. But yeah, I agree. Um, so it's just odd that Reed Shepard's just not playing very much. Um, so the rookie is off to a pretty slow start for the most part. Dalton Connect been okay. Yeah. Um, he's gotten some time here and there. Still wish he was a piston, but it is what it is. We're not gonna go. There. He's too old, Joey. Not gonna go. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let, let you invite me. Let's in. just let's just go to picks. Anyway. NFL picks. So now that it's, it's a little weird with having two weeks off, but do we not, need to go fast? I'm assuming. Yeah, we'll okay. go real fast. All right. We'll maybe just talk about the Lions. But anyway, a couple weeks ago, we were Malik took the lead back, and then last week, where did we go? Then Malik had a one point lead again. I'm trying to retrack. Anyway, so this past week. We had a good week overall. Hmm. Um, I had 11 correct picks, but you had 12. So now wow. you're back up by two. We were on fire. Um, yeah, so we're going all over the place. So we, I've got 80 correct. You've got 82. And we finally have a good Thursday night football game. Cincinnati at Baltimore. Yeah. Where are we going? I'm going Baltimore. Okay. It, it's proven at this point that Baltimore could lose to or beat anybody. Yeah. So Cincinnati could have a shot in this, but I'm going to trust them at home. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Baltimore as well. I, I think their defense will be the difference here. Um, they did just get Tredavious White at the trade deadline. Yeah. I don't think that really matters. He's, I think he's kind of yeah. Their cursed. their secondary hasn't been very good for some reason. No, it's, they've given yeah. up a lot of yards, so this might be a shootout. Um, but I think they're good enough to just make Joe Burrow a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and Cincinnati's defense is awful, mm -hmm. and Baltimore's offense is just one of the best right now. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to stick with Baltimore. Um, you waking up on uh, Sunday morning at 930 for Giants-Panthers? Are you that much of a sicko? Are we? Li listen, just listen to me. Okay. Just give me, a, like, a few seconds. Okay. Is Bryce Young okay? Um. Well, who did they play I think last? He's improved a little. Who did they play last week? He played the Saints. 
But he got his first home win. Yeah. He finished a, a game winning yeah. drive. Yeah. And he's making big league throws. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think it's time to give up on him. I don't think it was ever time to give up on him. Panthers by a thousand. But wow. <laughs> by a thousand. A thousand, Joey. Um book it. I will take those odds. I'm gonna take the Giants. Danny Dimes fans still I don't alive. Know why. I just Carolina's been a weird team, so I definitely could see them winning this game. Are you game. ready for future Lions backup, Dan, Dan, Daniel Jones? Are you ready? Wow, that sounds so awful. <laughs> but I don't know. Dimes. We'll see. Maybe we'll see Drew Locke. Who knows? But uh, I'm debating. Put in up. Tommy Cutlets, man. I the fans need something to cheer for. I think I benched Put Malik Tommy Neighbors in. in my fantasy league just so I don't have to wake up for this game. So Smart move. Um, normally, I'm a pretty big sicko, but this – I think I this is too disgusting. I think I have to call it. Um, New England at Chicago. Big Drake May fan, Malik. Listen, he's special. He's got special talent. What he what he did last week, he's literally putting him on there, putting them on his back because mm-hmm. their their roster is terrible. And that last play to go to overtime was great, but they they just suck. Yeah. And Matt Eberflus is a joke, but these are the type of games they've won. So Chicago. Ooh. I'm gonna go New England. I still England. love Drake May, but yeah, I'm going New England. I think this is the the revenge co- the revenge tour of the quarterbacks taken after Caleb Listen, Williams. I'd, I'd love if he won this game. Jaden Daniels beat up on Chicago a couple weeks ago, and uh, hopefully Drake May can do that again. Just trying to keep the NFC North down. Listen, Dennis Allen got fired last year in New Orleans. This might get Eberflus fired. Yeah, if they lose this one. Um, Buffalo at Indianapolis. Joe Flacco's Buffalo. back. He had his run. I know. Yes, yeah, the the juice the is kind of gone. The team's just not good enough. Yeah. Um, and Buffalo is still trending upwards. Uh, Denver at Kansas City. Kansas City still undefeated. They up are there. so fake. I know, right? but they're still winning. An overtime win against Tampa Bay. Jeez, man. Without Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. It, it, but they just get stupid. it done. It's stupid. And now they're playing against Denver. Denver's got a good defense, but their offense is kind of subpar. I'm taking Denver. Okay. I'm gonna take the the layup, and okay. I'll take Kansas City. But man, this is I, my crazy pick. I'm taking Denver. Hey, that Denver secondary can do something. They can do something. Yeah, they're good. They are good. But this could be a Travis Kelsey game. Um, and I would love if Denver wins. I just I don't believe it. Yeah. Um, Atlanta at New Orleans. New Orleans. I don't. I didn't hear who their interim head coach is gonna be. It don't matter. Um. <laughs> They also have everybody in the world banged up on this team. Did you see Michael Thomas going on a tirade against Derek Carr? I was, after that, I was waiting for Antonio Brown to retweet him and say CTESPN. Oh, my God. He unloaded. Yeah, that was wild. I used to like Derek Carr. (laughs) I think a lot of people did. I think a lot of people did. Um, But, yeah, Chris Olave is out for this game, most likely. Rashid Shahid still on IR. Uh, they're in trouble. Going Atlanta. Yep. Uh, San Francisco at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Christian McCaffrey might be back. He might. But they, I don't know. They they just feel off this season. Yeah. I would love it. And Tampa still has some left in the tank. Mm-hmm. So I'm going Tampa. I'm going to go with San Francisco just because they might get their vibe back if Christian McCaffrey's just on the field. Even if he doesn't play a ton, that might just help their morale. Um, Pittsburgh at Washington. All of a sudden, Russell Wilson kind of turning back the clocks, not entirely. Crazy things happen when you get in a good organization that knows what they're doing for the most part. Yeah. They almost made the playoffs with Kenny Pickett. Mm -hmm. Washington just got Marshawn Lattimore. Yeah, they did. Pretty good corner. Jaden Daniels is really good. Yeah. You pick first. Dang. This is a hard one. Yeah. But usually the way that I, like, I'm not a big Steelers fan, and I really love Jaden Daniels. So the easy choice here would be Washington, typically. But this feels like this is the kind of game that Pittsburgh wins. When people start doubting them again, it's like they're 6-2. and two. Um, I think they're 6-2. and two. Yeah. Washington seven and two, and this is where it's like 
oh, well, Washington's just the best team. They've been really good this season. They're much improved. And people start doubting the Steelers. That's when it seems like the Steelers come up and they win a game. So I'm going to go with the Steelers. Their defense is really good. It's going to be something Jaden Daniels hasn't seen all season. Now, the nice thing is he does run really well, but I think they're going to pressure him a lot. And I think Russell Wilson is a good enough game manager that they're going to be good. Najee Harris has also been pretty good the last couple games. And Washington's defense, although improved, I don't think is good enough just yet. So I'm going Pittsburgh. I'm going to go Washington. Okay. I thought about picking Pittsburgh too, mm-hmm. but I'm going to go Washington. Um, Minnesota at Jacksonville. A couple Minnesota. of bad defenses or bad passing defenses. Minnesota. Yeah. No, I'm not going to be that dumb. Uh, Tennessee at the Chargers. San Diego. San Diego. Yes. Okay. The San Diego Chargers. Fair enough. Um, Philly at Dallas. Looks like we're getting Cooper Rush. Philly. It sucks that these are like. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm not taking Cooper Rush. Uh, Jets at Cardinals. Jets finally winning a game last week. Hey. I'm going to take the Jets. Uh, the Cardinals are very frisky. Yeah. But I, this is a bad idea that I'm taking the Jets, but I'm just, I'm just going to do it. Okay. And I'm going to take the Cardinals just because. Why not? Um, Sunday Night Football. Uh, we, we know. We, we know what this is. Nico they, Collins seven is and back. One. They are 7-1. and one. Nico Collins is back. They said they couldn't play well in in bad weather. They did. Uh, yeah. They beat the Packers. Get a dome game. Sunday night football. The Titans game was a joke, Joey. It was a joke. It was comedy. Yeah. And uh, Houston's going to wear their all red uniforms. So it would be kind of cool if the Lions wear their all black. I don't know when they're going to decide. Probably on like Thursday or something. Um, but yeah, the Lions are just cooking right now. Yeah. Beat Green Bay at Lambeau in the rain when they said Jared Goff couldn't do it. Jared Goff took a uh, playbook out of his old backup quarterback's um, repertoire and went with uh, Teddy Two Gloves mm-hmm. impersonation. Um, and he looked good doing it. I was surprised, but looked really good. The Lions just, they're just steamrolling people. Traded for Zadarius Smith at the trade deadline yesterday. That's going to help their pass rush. Do wish they would have gotten one more piece, um, but, you know, I'm not going to harp on it too much. Um, Aleem McNeil has been incredible for them still. So hopefully Zadarius will help with that. And yeah, Brian Branch hopefully won't get ejected again. Dumb call. Yeah. Um, and this secondary continues to be turnover machines, which is just wild. And, Kirby Joseph leads the league in picks. Yeah. Um, finally getting a pick six in his career too, which is awesome. So lines are rolling. Good time to be a Lions fan. And we're, you can just go confidently into each week, which is awesome. And then finally, Monday Night Football, Dolphins at the Rams. Kind of a weird one. Matt Stafford had a hell of a game winner against the Seahawks last week. Mm-hmm. He can still throw one of the best balls in the world. And I'm going with the Rams. Yeah. yeah. Tua, the, the Dolphins pushed the Bills. They were in it. Mm-hmm. But, and there's a, there's a chance they could win this game. Yeah. I'm just going to go with the Rams. I'm going to go with the Dolphins just because, like you said, it, it, they can win this game. I, I think it's, I think I lean towards the Rams just because I, I do think the Rams' defense has actually been improved a little bit lately. Um, but I'm hoping another week with Tua, Miami will will get back on track. And I just hope this is a fun shootout game because, I don't know, it seems like a lot of the primetime games lately have been kind of bleh and not so fun. So that's our Week 10 picks. Oh, that's perfect timing. Um, so... Two weeks from now, we will discuss more. We'll have more information on college football. We'll find out whether Michigan State or Michigan are going to make a bowl game. Um, we'll get really good um, an idea of where the college football playoffs will be. Um, I'll dig deeper into college basketball now that we're getting into it. We'll be going into Ohio State week. Yeah, we will. Nice. That's crazy. Yeah. That is wild, man. And we'll get... In two weeks, that Michigan State-Kansas game will have been played, I believe, for basketball. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah, we'll have some big games to talk about, which is going to be good. And we'll be on week 12 of the NFL season. That's why. Flying. Yeah. And Gotta we'll see if the it. Pistons are still a decent team or not. But this has been views from the sidelines, and we'll see you in two weeks. I'm officially a Lions fan now, and I'm ready for heartbreak, and I'm terrified.